Hi, everyone. Good morning. Hi, everyone. This message will also follow in English. Hi, and thank you for your help to be here today. I'm Heidi, and I come from RR Print in Copenhagen. RR Print represents a number of interesting and talented producers of technical equipment to trickeries. Vi har valgt at samarbejde med Kodimark, fordi vi mener, at Kodimarks tør at teknik i en helt unik platform til vores kunder. Om lidt så tager Pierre over og fortæller dig om Kodimark og teknikken bag. Og bagefter er der en live demonstration af en Viva 340 med to forskellige jobs. Der bliver rig mulighed for at stille spørgsmål. Sammen vil vi gøre vores bedste for, at du kommer til at gå herfra med følelsen af, at det var værd at bruge tiden på det. Så velkommen til. Hi everyone and thanks for choosing to be here today. I'm Heidi and I am from RR Prints in Copenhagen. We represent a strong range of producers for, of technical uh, products for the printing industry and we have chosen to work together with Kodimac because we believe that the Aniflow waterless uh, uh, offset technique provides a unique platform for our customers. In a few seconds, Pierre will take over and will tell you all about Kodimac's uh, unique technique and this will be followed by a live demonstration um, at our Viva 340. You will get plenty of time to ask questions and together we will do our, our very best so you can walk away from here with a feeling that it was, with this was a time well spent. So welcome everyone. And I will now hand over the mic to Pierre. Pierre, please tell us what makes Kodimax so unique. Thank you, Heidi. Um, well, uh, thank you everyone for, for being here. I think Heidi uh, made a very nice introduction. So we'll go directly to the uh, presentation of uh, AniFlow technology, and then we'll go on machine to see uh, the demo. So you should now be able to see my screen and the presentation of AniFlow. We like to say about AniFlow that it is the best conventional technology to challenge the Flexo digital production model that we find in many places in the world in the label industries. Aniflow is a hybrid technology, uh, taking the best out of offsets and the best out of flexo. Um, what we have to remember is that Aniflow is offset technology. We use an offset plate to print and we print with a rubber blanket like any offset print units. We have the offset print quality. We can print 200 lines per inch. Uh, we can do stochastic screening. And we also have the advantage of the low cost of plate and quick plate making. So really, AniFlow is offsets. In order to make AniFlow easier, we actually use an Anilox. And this is where the Flexo uh, comes into the game. We use an Anilox to meter the ink into the print unit. So the, the Anilux gives AniFlow a great stability. Um, we eliminate the operator settings like the inky control and like the rubber roller settings that you need in traditional offsets. And this is a great way of saving on setup time and material waste. We also like to put the flexo productivity because the new generation of Viva machines, uh, even though it is a semi-rotary machine, we can now reach speeds of 65, 75, and up to 85 meters per minute uh, in semi-rotary mode. So it is a semi-rotary press, but we also have the flexibility and the productivity uh, for longer runs. I would like to say we also have the digital flexibility because we have a low cost of plate making, low cost of plates. We have a reduced setup time. We have little waste of material. So you can print expanded gamuts like on digital. And if a job comes, you can actually put that job on press the very same day. So this is what we call the flexibility of digital. So this is the AniFlow print unit. So as you see, it is a very simple unit. And this was really the purpose of Kodimag to make offsets an accessible and a simple technology. So it just relies on four cylinders. The Anilox cylinder is on top. Then we have a form roller cylinder. Then we have a plate cylinder and blanket cylinder. So the one on top is the Anilox. And the Anilox in our system is a sleeve Anilox. And it's as a special engraving to work with 
offset inks. We work with offset paste ink. So we have a special engraving based on medium, large, and extra large volumes. So just three kinds of analogs for any kind of work. The analogs is really what gives offset a great stability because with the analogs, from the very beginning of a production, you are sure that the three labels across the web and maybe the two labels in the repeats will have the same amount of ink and the same color results. So this is very important for the print consistency and to save up on, uh, on waste. The analogs as a specific, uh, specificity, it is regulated in temperature. There is actually a water circulation inside the analogs that you can regulate from 25 degrees Celsius up to 50 degrees Celsius. When you increase the temperature of the analox, the ink, which is a paste ink, becomes more liquid. And then you get more ink into the print unit and onto the substrates. So you can actually adjust the density of the print without changing the analogs, just by playing with the temperature setting. The good thing is that also that temperature setting is controlled by sensors. So that means that the regulation is automated and you are not dependent on the, or impacted by the ambient room temperature when you print a job. It can be in winter or summer, you will get the same results. The second cylinder that you will see on the Aniflow print unit is the form roller blanket. So it's a cylinder which is um, on which we mount a steel-based uh, blanket. And um, as you see, the four cylinders have the exact same size. And this is very important because that means that each rotation of the cylinder, the plate gets fresh ink from the beginning to the end of the plate. So you don't have any ghosting effect or any chimney effect like you have on traditional offsets. It is a very good way to make offsets quality even better. Next cylinder is the plate cylinder. And as Heidi told us earlier, Cody Mike chose to work with waterless offset technology. We started waterless offset technology in 1999. And since then, all our presses are waterless offset technology. Why did we go waterless offsets? Because in the label business, you need to work with polypropylene, polyethylene, coated paper, uncoated paper maybe. And the biggest challenge in offset is the ink water balance because the ink water balance will need to be adjusted to the type of material that you print on, to the ambient room temperature. It will have to be adjusted to the machine speed. And this is the biggest challenge. And the ink water balance generates waste and generates setup time. So when you choose to go waterless offset, you actually are much more efficient in terms of setup and waste. Still, what less offsets is offset technology. So as I said, you get the high printing quality of offset. We print 200 lines per inch. We can print stochastic screening without any problem. And we can even do some security printing uh, when you have a 5080 DPI uh, CTP. One of the advantage also of the waterless offset plate is that uh, the cost is very reduced. You can find in Europe plates for waterless offset under three euros per plate on the size of a Viva 340. So this is very economical compared to Flexo technology or even to the cost of digital printing. The last cylinder that we see on the drawing is the blanket cylinder. As I said, it's offset technology and offset prints on the material through a rubber blanket. So that allows us to print on every kind of substrate, even the rough textured and coated materials uh, on lower quality cardboard. For example, you can also print because uh, going through the blanket uh, makes that possible. Um, we also have a patented system on our blanket cylinder, which is an IR lamp. This infrared lamp actually warm ups the blankets when the speed of the machine increases to actually make optimum the ink release from the blanket to the material. And this is something that Cody Mag uh, has been doing for the last 12 years, and it's very efficient. So that was a presentation of the Aniflow print unit. Um, we'll talk now of the um, press range and the offer that we have based on Aniflow technology. 
The Viva 340 Evolution is what we would say our entry level uh, press. And this machine is meant to compete directly with digital technology. That machine does the exact same job as a digital press, which is to put ink on the material, on the substrate. On this machine, we have no varnish, we have no die cuts, we just print colors. So this is very efficient because that means that on every setup, you don't need to worry about the flexo varnish, about the die cut, about the matrix rewind, about the slitting. All this goes offline like you do on digital presses. And that makes the printing machine very efficient in job change and setup. Being a six color press, you can also run expanded gamuts like you do on digital machine with CMYK, orange green or orange violet according to your jobs and to your needs. And that avoids wash up. And this is also very efficient for the machine because once you don't have to do any wash up, the job change becomes even more efficient. Still, where we are more efficient than, than digital machine is that if you, run, if you need to run a spot color for your customers, you can wash up the unit, change the color, and run a spot color, a PMS 485 if you need for your customer. And that's possible and at no extra cost. Cleaning the unit will just be 10 minutes uh, of time, and then you put a spot color for your customer. So this is really a very flexible um, production tool for all the customers except offline finishing. For all the others, uh, we can offer the Viva 340 Aniflo. So this is the best seller for, for Codimag today. And this machine is totally specified to your needs. So you can have four, five, six uh, Aniflo units for the colors. You can have Flexo for varnish, Flexo for opaque white as number one. You can have lamination. We can have semi-rotary hot foil with a foil saving system. You can have a flatbed foiling embossing unit for the wine and spirit markets. You can have screen printing for white or for high build varnish or special inks. So that machine is totally tailored and manufactured to your specifications. And it's very efficient for the short run because the job change will be very quick. But with the 75 meters per minute maximum speed, you can actually go into runs that are already considered, I would say, medium runs. Um, for the longer runs, most of our customers would go to a wider machine. And we offered the Viva 420 Aniflo. Um, so that machine obviously has a wider, is a wider machine. And you also have bigger cylinders. So your maximum print length is also bigger. And you can reach 85 meters per minute. So that machine is mostly meant to compete uh, with Flexo machines on markets that are usually considered to be flexo, food labels, detergents, automotive sector, um, pet food, um, and very often specified with flexo white as number one, six color, flexo lamination die cuts uh, to, to run those, uh, those jobs. Still, you can have all the embellishment in line also, and you can have hot foil screen printing and all the other processes. So this slide um, shows you quickly uh, what our customers are actually doing with our machines today. Um, if you look on the left, um, the red bars represent the runs done by the Viva 340 and the blue bars by the Viva 420. And if you see the 34 plus 19 percent, that means that 50 percent of the jobs that are run on our Viva 340 at our customers is under 1,000 linear feet. So that means that all those jobs are actually competing directly with digital printing. And still, our customers with the Viva can do those runs and be efficient against digital. So this is quite important to see that the Viva 340 has the capacity to do those very short runs. Still, as you see, some of our customers and most of our customers will be running between 1,000 and 5,000 uh, linear meters of material. When you take the case of the Viva 420, the wider machine, um, we mostly see that 30% of the jobs, sorry, are above 5,000 linear meters. So that's where we see that the Viva 420 competes more on the flexo markets for uh, other kind of jobs above 5,000 linear meters. Offset for a very long time has been thought to be a technology dedicated to wine and beverage mostly. 
Uh, today, this is changing a lot, and we see that only 29% of our presses are going into the wine and beverage markets. Um, the food, the consumer goods, industrial labels, cosmetic, even some pharma customers are using our technology, uh, and this is representing a growing part of our business today. This is a short story about a customer in Spain uh, who has a Viva uh, 340 Aniflow machines. And after a full week of production, they had to uh, come back on the Saturday morning to finish uh, production and to do some more. And on the Saturday morning, they have put on the machine 16 different jobs uh, for a total production of 7,600 meters on two different substrates with three different die shapes and two different varnishes. And they have done that in four hours of production with only one operator. So if you look at that, it really shows the flexibility and the versatility of the machine. You can do 7,600 meters of production in four hours with 16 different SKUs. So this is, I think, quite, um, uh, quite interesting to, to analyze and to see the result of, uh, of the machine. So Codimag has been very active in the self-adhesive label business for, uh, for many, many years. Uh, we've been doing offset presses uh, for more than 23 years now. And uh, we've been in the label business since uh, 94. So uh, it's been a while. Um, these last few years, we've also started to uh, work on other uh, packaging material. And one of them is uh, folding boxes, carton. On the Viva 420, we are able to print a cardboard between 200, 250, up to 350 gram per square meter for small size um, folding boxes. The main advantage is that you can do everything in line. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you can do the print, you can do the embellishment if you have some foil, some screen printing with special inks, spot varnishes. And installing the FDC by Edel, you can actually do the die cut and the crease uh, in line with the printing machine. So this actually gives you the opportunity to go from a roll of cardboard to a finished die cut and crease box in one pass. And for a short run of high quality folding carton, this is very efficient. We can get up to 85 meters per minute as uh, same as for uh, labels. And uh, this avoids the sheet-fed model of uh, folding box production, where you often have many different steps of production for printing, foiling, varnishing, embossing, die cutting in different machines. We also have some experience now, and we've been working each time more on unsupported film, and we have experience with in-mode labels. So we can print in-mode labels, mostly polypropylene between 50 and uh, 70 micron thick. And with LED technology that we have been implemented on our machine and that we will have in our machine in April, we're also able to run PTG 50 micron for Shrinkly, for example. So this is the end of my production. Thank you very much for your attention. And I think that now Benoit will uh, take over to the factory to show you the Viva live. Thank you, Pierre. <clears throat> So I will be your cameraman and you will uh, explain this uh, machine in our factory for the demo today. So we will print the first job and then make a complete job change in front of you in live conditions. So you will see the versatility uh, of our press. Very good. So Thank our brother today is uh, Pascal and he will start the press so we can show you how it works since the beginning of the press. Okay, so here we have the uh, unwind stand. So we have a, a roll lift and you can get in the machine with maximum rolls of one meter diameter. Uh, so for most material, that means uh, between three and 4,000 linear meters of material on the unwind. So it allows you to do uh, some quite long runs without too many uh, roll splices. We have obviously a web guide uh, to insert the web into the machine. And in that spot, we can also insert any web cleaning technology, corona treaters. Web cleaners can be contact, can be vacuum, according to what you, what you need. 
So all this part was continuous. And as you see underneath the web, there is a dancer. And that dancer is actually the one converting the motion, the web movement from full rotary to semi-rotary technology. And this is what allows us to print any repeat without changing the cylinders. At the beginning of the machine, we have a IR lamp to preheat the web, right here, thank you, Benoit. So this IR lamp is here to heat up the web at 35 degrees Celsius. And this uh, is very good when the paper gets too cold into the machine. Uh, it's very nice uh, that we have the IR lamp and uh, we have a constant temperature of the web and it will always be very stable in terms of uh, print. Here is the flexo station for opaque white. So we're now we're printing on a clear PP and we're using flexo for opaque white to get nice opacity. And from here we go into the Aniflow units where we have cyan, magenta, yellow, black, and here we will see the Aniflow units. So we'll start from the top as we have done earlier and here you see the chamber blade with the Anilox. Um, so, uh, as I told you, the Anilox is a sleeve and the chamber blade is open so you can fill in the, the ink. Uh, here on the CMYK orange, we're all using M size Anilox and then we use the L for the darker pantones and the XL only to do solid printing on uh, uncoated stock. Underneath, we've got the uh, blanket uh, cylinder, uh, the foam roller blanket, transferring the ink from the analogs down to the plate. And the green cylinder is the plate cylinder. So here we are using a Verico Zahara plate. Uh, it's a 0 0.3 aluminum based plate, uh, like very standard in, a, in offset. And there is a silicone layer on top. The silicone layer will repel the ink and this is what allows us to work without dampening system and without water in the system. And right here underneath, you see the printing blanket. So this one is a Contitech uh, UV black blanket, very standard on the market. And that blanket can be used to print any repeats between 150 and 305 millimeters. Here on the back side, uh, we are just showing you here the infrared lamp I have told you about. And th that infrared lamp will actually start to warm up when the machine goes up in speed to maintain the same inking results between setup and production speed. And this is a patented system by Kodimac. Here we have uh, the UV dryers as between each station. So this one is the IST system, MBS7. Uh, we also work with GW uh, to go into conventional or LED uh, cure. So here you will see the semi-rotary motion of the web. So here we have the black. And then we go into the orange. So this job is being printed five colors with orange. Here we have the Flexo varnish station, uh, which can also be used for lamination. Uh, you can do self-adhesive lamination, you can do wet glue lamination, and you can do cold foil if you want on certain materials. Um, so this is something that we uh, also offer at the moment. And then the last unit is the die cut unit, which is a semi-rotary die cut. So we have a one cylinder size magnetic cylinder for any repeats. And it comes with a gap master adjustment system from Cohen Beck. So you can actually control the depth of cutting uh, even if the liner thickness changes. So We'll talk about Smidjet now. Um, so this black box that you are watching now, Smidjet is a French company called Odizio. It's a startup company that is developing right now a full width spectrometer uh, to measure colors and to really measure colors with LED lights and as a spectral value. So it is really LED measures 
uh, taken on the full width of the of the machine to control the color stability during the print. Um, so this is the first one that will go into production at one of our customers within two weeks. And that system is also used for the web inspection. So maybe you know you can show us the speed of the machine. I don't know what we are now. Yeah, we're going we to... We are 43 meters per minute. Per minute. We will increase a little bit of speed. Yeah, production speed, let's say 60 meters per minute. Okay, so right now we are producing 84,000 labels per hour. And it's a nice size label for, for cosmetic. Uh, we've got six labels per repeat and it's going to be 84 labels per hour in terms of production. So you see really that semi-rotary technology has changed from what you might have known in the past. And today it is really a technology that can produce high volume of labels. So here, Benoit will be showing us the matrix rewind. So it's a system that you can run as a traditional matrix, or you can also run as a snowball system. According to the shape of the matrix and the material, you can do both. We have slitting with uh, razors or uh, scissors. And then we go into the uh, rewind unit, which has also a roll lift, and you can go up to one meter diameter rolls. Okay, very good. So maybe now we can um, stop the press and we will change uh, the outside plate, show you the plate change. And we'll go to another version of the same job, so different SKU. That was, I think, a coconut label. And the next one will be an argan oil shampoo label kind of thing. Okay, so as you can see, the plates are ready uh, on top of each print unit. Um, the plate is already bent on a plate bender. So we've got two plies, one at the head edge, the other one at the tail edge. And this is the, the plate bender that we use. Very simple unit. Um, for the plate, uh, maybe I can comment a little bit uh, on the pre-press system. Um, any thermal offset CTP will be able to image those plates. Uh, so thermal offset CTP today um, are quite uh, low investment, I would say. It's uh, between 16 and 80,000 euros uh, investment for thermal CTP. The plate washer are based on um, water washout systems. So it's only water, a few brushes. Um, very small footprint and very quick. Imaging a plate on the CTP will take about three minutes and then the washout will be another two minutes. So making a new plate uh, will take you about five minutes if anything happens on press. So this is also very flexible. Uh, if you have a mistake on a plate, making a new plate will just take five minutes and you don't need to remove the job from the press to put a new one. You can just hold the press for 10 minutes and you will get a new a new plate to run the job. So as you have seen, uh, Pascal has already removed and installed the first plate. So we will see that on the second print unit, but it really takes uh, about one minute uh, to remove and put a new plate. Pascal also cleans the blankets, which is a very good practice when you are finished with a job. It's always nice to clean the blankets between each job. So now the plate is coming out. And yeah, did you mention the, the price of the printing plates? So the price of the printing plate is uh, under three euros per plate on uh, on this size uh, for the Viva 340. So yes, it's a very economical plate, then very quick to do. And this is actually what allows us to be competitive also with digital. We don't have a very high fixed cost 
before we get the first good label on press. Um, so obviously that allows us to be competitive for short runs. When we compare to Flexo, for example, in Flexo, before you get the first good label, you've got the pre-press, plate making, you've got many print units, the setup is longer, you need to change the cylinders, and all that fixed cost is always hard to justify for short runs. Um, with semi-rotary offsets, this is a total different story. And the plate is aluminium, so most of our customers they actually um, resell or recycle the, the plate. It's aluminium, so it's very easy to do. And yeah, normally you would not uh, use an archive for all the, the, the used plates and reuse them. You would normally... No. All of our customers, uh, okay. they just throw them out, throw them away, and uh, bring new plates. Um, yes, yeah, storage is not very, um, very easy, or uh, it takes space and it doesn't uh, count for much. And with a plate uh, at three euros, I mean, you see this job five plates, it's fifteen euros material. It took us twenty minutes to make the plates. Uh, there's really no reason to save them. Uh, bring them back on press. Uh, if you put them back on press and there's a scratch, you will need to redo the plates anyway. So all of our customers are actually uh, getting a new set of plate each time they start the job. And again, Pierre, I know some of our customers have the question that what happens with the ink when it's transferred from the analogs roller over the, uh, the rubber roller to, mm -hmm. the, to the printing plate, what happens to the, in the areas where there's no ink consumption? What okay, happens yeah. to the ink? Okay, it, I, I, I your question. Yeah, okay, so it's actually a matter of equilibrium. Um, the analogs at the beginning will give ink through all the form roller blankets then the foam roller blanket will transfer the ink only on the image area. And in the non-image area, the silicone will repel the ink and the ink will stay on the foam roller blankets. So when it goes back to, uh, to the analogs, it will actually not take more ink from the analogs because there's already ink on the, on the blankets. And uh, so the first, after just the first few revolutions, uh, the equilibrium is made and then uh, there is no ink coming out of the analogs on those areas. This is actually really the, the magic of, uh, of waterless offset. The silicone layer that repels the ink, um, as it's a solid area, it really allows you to print sharp dots and to imagine each all the area of the plate which doesn't have to print, uh, it's mechanical repelling of the, of the ink. And this is where it's very efficient. And in order to do that and to achieve this, we also have a water circulation in the plate cylinder. So our plate cylinder is water cooled around 20, 22 degrees Celsius to make sure that the silicone repels the ink. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yeah. And here we are oh, now. Uh, with, uh, sorry. With the last uh, print station, the orange. So I haven't looked. I think it's been less than five minutes. I think so. I didn't count it either, but I think we were less than five minutes. Yeah. And yeah, you can ready. maybe explain uh, what is the scale on the on the blanket that we see. Okay. Yes. Next. Uh, yeah. If you check here, you see a scale printed on each side of the blanket on the brown part, and that scale uh, actually allows us to change the size uh, from 150 up to 305 millimeters, and to set the blanket at the right print length. So the blanket is actually rewound inside the blanket cylinder and we just get out or inside the cylinder the quantity of rubber that we need for the right print length. Okay, good. So we will be ready to start again.
So here with our pre-register positions, all the colors and all the units will be very close to register and our automatic register system will take over, read the marks and do the fine tuning for register. I get a message that the video is gone. Um, I is, still have it. All right. We're just checking on okay. our side. Oh, it's back. It's okay, back. thank you. It's back. So here you can see 23 meters, and we are in register ready to go back to production speed. Yeah, so you see, really, I think the most uh, impactful aspect of all of that is the, the easiness and the, um, the, how fast it is to go from one job to another. I mean, it's been only five minutes, uh, it's been less than 30 meters of material, and we can go from version A to version B uh, of a label on a clear PP with white varnish and die cut. When you compare that, uh, most people would say, well, when we get different versions of labels, we have to go with digital, that's the only solution. And it's not true. Uh, offset is a really efficient solution to do different SKUs of the same job. Uh, it is more economical than uh, digital printing. It does everything in line. And here we have the white, we have the varnish, and we have the die cuts in line. And uh, it doesn't take us that much long uh, to, to do the job change. So I think uh, this is quite, uh, quite nice and quite important to underline and here so we are printing 65 Benoit if I'm not wrong yeah 66 66 meters per minute Very good. Okay, maybe we can um, go to the uh, q and A. I don't know, Benoit, if you want to stop the machine, maybe. And yeah. if there You're are any specific some material, questions. Shortage. <laughs> yes. But, uh, we won't be short in our answers to your questions. So you have any questions, very welcome. We can show you either live on press and you can go back to the presentation if you need. So don't hesitate. There is um, a chat room yeah. just next to you, I guess, where you can ask questions. You can uh, write in English or in the Nordic languages, and then we'll try to do our best to translate. Um, one of the questions I was thinking about, uh, Pierre, is the lifetime of the printing plates. If you have large mm -hmm. jobs, how long will they... So we, um, I would say both manufacturers, Verico and Torre, they have been working a lot on um, on improving uh, the lifetime of um, offset plates uh, because offset plates are a bit more sensitive uh, than uh, flexo plates, for example, even though flexo plates can have also uh, issues from time to time. Um, the maximum we have been running uh, with those plates is 12,000 linear meters, uh, so which for most of our customers is largely enough. When they have very long runs, some of our customers use two sets of plates for the run just to make sure they have it. The cost for the second set of plates, as I told you, is going to be 15, 20 euros. It doesn't impact so much. And at least you've got a spare set uh, if, you, if you need. So some of our customers do that. But really for some, uh, I would say, very long runs already. If you're going to run 1,000, 2,000 meters, no, no problem. So there's a question about changing the analogs. So yes, we can change the analogs. Um, so as I told you, the analogs is a, is a sleeve. Um, so actually, the only thing you need to do is empty uh, the chamber blade, remove the chamber blade, and get the analogs out. Uh, it's going to take um, less than five minutes to do that. I don't know if Pascal could do it live or? 
Pascal. Pascal. Yeah, we are going to try to show that live for you. Je vous demandez de sortir la ligne up sur le groupe numéro 5. Okay, so uh, okay. <laughs> sorry, there is no any locks on. Uh, oh, on okay. This, so what, right what now, we could actually do? We will put one. <laughs> yeah, we'll do the, the 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 operation on the other way. So maybe Benoit, you can show an Anilox sleeve. Yep, right here, Pascal broke one. So it's a ceramic coated Anilox. Uh, the only thing different is uh, the engraving. So at the moment, it's not an Apex Anilox. We're working both with TLS and with uh, Cheshire from the UK. We're about to try some Apex Anilox uh, here. Um, as we're running paste ink, it's a very open engraving, but it's a special engraving uh, designed for the Aniflow system. So here you see the Anilox has been mounted on the shafts. Then it's locked. And we put the chamber blade on top. So when you need to change the analogs, you just do the operation one way or the other. And, uh, and that's very, uh, very easy and very quick. Um, our machines always come with two set of analogs per unit. So you've got two analogs, two chamber blades. So you always have spare analogs to, to play with. What you have to think is that the CMYK will not change. I mean, if you leave the CMYK on press, those analogs can stay the whole week uh, without any problem. Then after a week, we always recommend to take them out, clean them, and put them back for the following week. And then you can run, run spun colors uh, if, you, if you need, obviously. So for opaque whites, we always recommend Flexo, as it's easier to print um, Flexo uh, opaque white, uh, you get a better opacity. Offset is high quality, but uh, the ink um, opacity is very low. Uh, it's a very thin layer of ink. That's why you can do very fine rasters. But if you print a big uh, white solid, you will never get in offset the same opacity as you would get in Flexo. So that's why uh, for opaque white, we always recommend Flexo as number one. So for the rubber uh, blankets, um, from what we see in production, um, printing blankets, I would say anywhere between four to 12 weeks. Um, the foam roller blanket, you need to change less and it would be around eight to 16 maybe weeks. So this is a printing blanket that uh, Benoit is showing right now. And you see the scale on the sides that will allow you to adjust the print size. And I don't know if we have a form roller blanket, which is metal not back. here, not here, but I, I can ask. Oh, uh, it's, um, sure. it's a very simple uh, blanket. I think it's 196 thick, if I'm not wrong, plus the steel base. And the foam roller blanket, we actually use the same plate bender to bend the, the steel base, and it is mounted on the cylinder like a like a like, like a, a plate. plate. Like a printing plate. Pascal is coming back with the with the foam roller blanket. Tac, Pascal. Okay, here it is. So yes, it's the uh, uh, same rubber. So this one is a Contitec also UV black. Uh, and then we just have the metal back uh, that then we will bend and it will be mounted on the cylinder. So changing a blanket is a, also a few minutes operation. So uh, we are using only UV inks uh, for, uh, for the label business. This is the most uh, common uh, drying or curing technology. Um, so it's all UV, it can be LED UV. Um, you've got inks that are low migration, so you can do, um, you can do low migration printing for food labels, for example. But we don't use solvent or water-based inks. We could do water-based varnishes if you would need with an IR lamp to, to dry the, the ink. 
but this is only for special application. Most of our customers are using UV Flexo for varnish also. Okay. Are there any other questions? Yeah. Someone's typing. Price of ink compared to Flexo inks or offset inks. So yeah, the waterless offset are going to be uh, a bit more expensive uh, than the Flexo inks, for example. Uh, what you have to realize is that the ink consumption will be less. Uh, in offset, when we print a solid area, the ink deposit on the material is about 1.5 gram per square meter. So it's about half of what you would uh, put in flexo printing. Um, so this is quite uh, quite different, but the inks would be, uh, would be more expensive. Um, in the comparison and the cost calculation that we have done comparing to digital or even to flexo, um, we see that in our system, the ink costs will represent between two and 4% of the production cost. So it's really negligible. It's not that much. If you compare with the material, we get to the material being between 40, even up to 50% of the production cost. So ink Maybe is not even, that Even relevant. more right now. <laughs> yeah, even more right now, yes. Unfortunately. And there's another one coming now. A I show you substrate, also the... a substrate not suitable for any flow. Um, uh, it's a hard one. So we've tried uh, cardboard and it's been successful. We can do IML. We can do shrink sleeve now with LED curing. Any self adhesive materials can be printed. Um, yeah, the only um, we can do some pouches. Um, you know, like the paper PE laminates or uh, PE and aluminium laminates. Um, one thing we could not go put through the machine with the semi-rotary motion is very thin aluminium film, uh, you know, like for blisters, for example. This is really too thin, uh, and this doesn't uh, resist the tension and the web uh, motion. So, yeah, there's one. Very depending, thin aluminium film. Depending on, uh, on some substrate, some laminated tubes are very stretchy. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the fact is, it's not that we cannot print on it. It's just the behavior of the web inside the semi-rotary uh, web movement that is tricky. But we have some material that we can print easily because it's not so stretchy, but some of them are more difficult to, to, to use with our press due to semi-rotary. It's not yeah, the, a question of uh, printability. The, the latest generation of, um, of Viva presses with a denser system for the web motion, with the LED and the cold UV, uh, really give us today much more opportunities to run unsupported film. Uh, still, obviously, if you have some specific application, we'll always ask uh, to go for trials first before we can commit to any, any results. Okay, are there any further questions? Anything we didn't? Look There's at yet, or nothing more coming into nope. the chat. Okay, then I want to say thank you to Pascal for uh, doing an excellent thank demonstration. Thank for you, us. Pascal. <laughs> we have the honor to have my uh, father on site for once. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> for those who don't know him, he's a uh, founder of the company. Oh, and uh, thank you everyone for attending this webinar. Thank you very much to everyone for your attention. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to go back to uh, Heidi. She uh, talks to know quite a lot about our technology now. And if she doesn't, she's always in contact with me. So we oh, can yeah. come back to you and bring you all the all the questions. All the Thank answers. you very much. Sorry. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.